Today's incomes gap is largely a skills gap. This was in 99, but 25 years later, it's still a convenient excuse for a lot of major issues in today's job market. It's the easiest excuse to invoke because you pass the blame to the workforce. Well, we'd hire you, but you don't have the skills, especially now with AI, right? You need the AI skills and then come back later and maybe we're going to get you a job. For the last decade, it's been software engineering. We don't have enough engineers, but today... Every year, India produces 1.5 million engineers. 1.5 million every year. One and a half million. I think India has solved this one for the whole world. But do you know how many can build a core AI product? Just about 2,000. You see, now we need more people to work in AI. To work what in AI? Everybody uses AI already and you cannot really touch the foundational models more than just prompt engineering and just using the APIs. It's totally hopeless to compete with us. <laughs> I, think it, I think it is pretty hopeless, but... So in the next years, the skills gap will close on AI as well, probably in a year or so. But until then, we're going to be competing with millions of engineering graduates that all of them will try to get into AI because it's not that complicated. Everything is so abstracted the way that when you work in AI, you just use products that are built by the big tech company. You're not really building anything. And even when you are, it's impossible to get traction when you compete with the big tech companies. You, know, you can build on the models, you know, be it uh, ChatGPT and many others. But if you want to build foundational models, how should we think about that? It's totally hopeless to compete with us on training foundation models. The only option you have is to put things together and hope that it achieves what you actually want it to achieve. And then you use cloud services to deploy your small scale applications. So AI, DevOps, and some cloud architecture. So those 2,000 AI engineers in India will soon become 200,000. Not much of a skills gap and before you even wake up and try to get in, it's gonna be closed. First, there's a surplus of graduates. Second, most of them have a skill gap. They have the basic education needed, but there's a lack of application-based education. That means they know the theory, but fail at the practical. Yes, and who is gonna train them on the job? All companies prefer to hire people that are already trained because people job hop a lot nowadays. So a company won't really take the risk and really won't invest in people like they used to do when people actually stayed employed in a job for, I don't know, like five or 10 years. Nowadays, you get a job as a stepping stone to a better job. Everybody knows that. So nobody's gonna invest in you, right? Nobody's gonna waste time and effort in order to train somebody that is most likely gonna job hop for 10K extra. So there's no on the job practice that you can get. Only certifications and diplomas that might and only might get you a job values the corporate training market at over $361 billion, that's a major industry just by itself. And it relies heavily on people believing that they are just one qualification away from landing a job that is just desperate to find the right worker. In Europe alone, 68% people fear they could lose their job due to AI. Before AI takes your job or it's automated away, the millions of graduates from all over the world are gonna take Western jobs because let's be realistic, we don't have enough people to compete with the millions that are graduating every year and that are looking for remote jobs in Western countries. The skills gap has been used to push for a lot of skilled migration, which has arguably gone too far in America, but it's been even more obvious in places like Canada, the UK, Australia, Germany, and New Zealand. It's a skills gap also because we're in a recession. So companies and the media, right? They need to blame somebody. They cannot blame themselves for blowing up demand and then crashing the markets intentionally. No. It's better to blame the graduates that they're not prepared, that they lack the practical skills required to meet the demands of employers. So what's the solution? Upskilling, right? It makes sense. Skills gap, upskilling. In what? AI, what is there to do? Especially for computer science grads. What are they learning? They're learning to copy paste code from ChatGPT and Claude to tailor their CVs to the job requirements so pretty much lie about what they actually know. That's exactly what those 1.5 million of graduates are actually doing. Spamming the world with job applications, just like every other graduate from every country all over the world. I'm not sure how using AI is going to close this skills gap. We're all just spamming everybody at this point. Look at LinkedIn and what it's become. Every year, India produces 1.5 million engineers. Do you realize how many CS degrees are handed out just like candy? The 1.5 million engineers are total engineers, okay? But specifically computer science is about 30%, meaning 450,000. Literally, how can you compete? Even if 50% of the competition isn't qualified to the same standard. Let's say that, right? You're still gonna have 225,000 people. 
just from one big country that are ready to work for a fifth of what you're actually making. And let me put it in context, right? In Poland, you only get about 15,000 CS graduates every year. And in the UK, I think you get around 16,000. So European countries that best produce 44 times, let's say an average of 5,000 candidates, all of Europe actually produces 220,000 graduates. You cannot really compete. And on top of that, you're also a Gen Zer and nobody wants to hire you anyway. One in six companies do not want to hire Gen Z. They say Gen Z is entitled, easily offended, unable to handle feedback, lacking in motivation, professionalism, strong work ethic and communication skills. Because nobody wants to hire so-called expensive and entitled people that don't want to be taken advantage of. So what's the solution? Well, the only way out is upskilling and India's engineers agree. 87.5% believe upskilling can future-proof their careers. Future-proof their careers. Yeah, upskilling will future-proof your career. Think about it. Four years ago, there were some people that thought it's a smart thing to get into computer science and three years ago, LLM started to get traction and five years from now, we're going to be automated away and replaced by at least 1.5 million engineers times five. That's 7.5 million engineers who are just going to fight for the bottom of the barrel IT jobs together with Western countries graduates. You don't even get a chance to start your career. How do you future proof it? Clearly not in tech. Listen, there's no networking your way into it or upskilling in AI. Let me tell you when the skill gap is going to close. The skills gap is going to close when we're going to be out of the recession. Then companies are going to start hiring again as the meta will change from firing people in order to raise your stock price to hiring people to look like you're growing and of course raise your stock price. The problem of the skills gap quietly slips away during the good times. Research published by economists found was that the skills and experience required was almost directly proportional to the unemployment rate. In plain English, what this meant was that when there were lots of people looking for a job, all of a sudden the skills requirement for roles became a lot higher. It just goes around in circles. They're a lot more relaxed in times of growth and they're going to accept anyone. But in a recession, all of a sudden you need to pass in like 10 rounds of interviews and need to have any skill that they can think of when writing their job description. The only problem is that until growth starts again, we don't know how the world will look like. Now we're in a recession and most likely you're going to be upskilling in things that won't even matter when growth will come back because the jobs that they're going to be hiring for then, I have no idea what they're going to be, except maybe for the military, but I have no idea. And they have no idea either. So upskilling is actually useless when you don't know what to upskill in. You're just burning time and effort trying to skip rope on the side of the field. So only when we're going to be out of the recession, only then will the jobs come back and by then AI will just be a common tool that everyone will use. It won't really be a differentiator because everybody's going to use it. So relax and try to maintain your mental health and just get better at what you do and try to keep up to date. But don't chase trends unless you actually catch them early. But what do you think? Are you upskilling? And what are you upskilling in? I see a lot of people nowadays looking into robotics because it's becoming like a trend. I really hope that you enjoyed my comments and if you want me to talk more about this, let me know down in the comments. Check out getthatbadge.com if you're looking to get cloud certified and get a job as a cloud engineer. And if you like what you heard, please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.